We're going to explore texture. Our world would be a very dull place without texture. Imagine a tree without bark or a leopard without its fur. Imagine everything around you as a smooth surface, all with the same look and feel. Without the patterns of light and dark, without the feel of something soft or fluffy, or something hard and prickly, the world would indeed not contain the richness it currently does. Texture can be defined as an object's visual or tactile surface characteristics and appearance, or as something composed of closely interwoven elements. You can think of it like a cloth. In graphic design, texture is most often used as a secondary element to reinforce an idea, rather than a primary element to communicate a concept. It is a powerful addition to your design because it can add depth and interest to an ordinary flat design, especially in the world of computer design, where the effort to design a usable interface often leads to flat color or white backgrounds. The skillful use of texture can add a new dimension to your design. Texture, however, can be the element that really takes your design to the next level. Textures create visual interest and adds those touches of detail that were previously missing. Think about what kinds of textures are inviting. Silky, soft, fluffy, and which you'd rather keep away from. Rough, hard, maybe thorny. Texture can be used to define shapes or space, add visual interest, which is basically just detail, create a mood, emphasize, create a tactile response, or evoke memories and add realism. You can use texture to add richness and dimension to your layouts. You have tactile texture, which are things that can be felt, things like embossed type, textured paper. These types of formats will give you some sort of tactile texture. You also have visual texture, which creates the illusion of texture on a printed or digitally viewed piece. Often backgrounds appear with a rough or texture, uh, textured look, even like a photograph of gears as a backdrop for a piece provides texture. Texture can be used to fill a shape or as an overall background for type and line to help um, to create a particular mood for a certain design. Even when texture isn't intentionally added, the design will contain some form of texture, such as the texture of the paper or the computer monitor or other materials that might have been used. Contrasting textures are not normally seen together and they can create interesting feelings. For example, a close-up of a photograph of glass against a photograph of a rust can can create an odd but intriguing look. Pattern is actually a line of visual texture. When an image of a line um, of type is repeated over and over and over, it's like it's kind of like wrapping paper. The rhythms of the lights and the darks add dimension to a surface, and that's why patterns make wonderful backgrounds or borders for layouts. Texture that's in our everyday life are is something that we should definitely look at when we're considering how to use texture in design. To better understand the use of texture as design elements, think of some of the uses of texture in your everyday environment and how these textures can communicate a mood. Become aware of textures that you come across in everyday life. Stucco on buildings, bricks, or cement. The view of fields from an airplane as opposed to houses and roads. Fabric that is worn or that you sit on. As soon as you notice that the texture that exists on nearly every surface, you'll begin to develop an awareness of textural possibilities that can powerfully reinforce the concept of your design. It is possible to communicate on an extra level through a real or imagined sense of touch. This can be achieved by printing on textured paper, again that's tactile, or by setting a photograph of a texture as a design element, which is visual. Finding appropriate textures, tactile variety, um, you have to consider where textures come from and what varieties are actually available. The first texture a design has is often the paper you use. Recycled and handmade papers in particular may have a noticeable texture or they may contain flecks like coated paper papers tend to have a slicker feel than uncoated papers. 
There are various textures available through printing processes. Some of these include silk screening, embossing, debossing, foil stamps, and engraving. Echo textures in the photos are from the text in a layout. If a subject is of ethnic or cultural nature, find native textures in plants, building materials, and fabrics of the region that will add to the overall experience. Instead of a simple solid line for a border on a layout, try dots or dashes, or even for more texture, make it look like it was sewn stitches. Use twigs or twine. If it fits the style, attach photos to the layout with duct tape, staples, or paper clips. Remember, if creating texture completely from scratch in Photoshop is too difficult or too time consuming, take a picture, scan it, or search through stock photography collections. Texture must support the concept. The central role in design is that the idea is of primary concern, and anything that distracts from the idea is to be discouraged. Texture can be such a fun element to use that it may be tempting to use texture that is not sufficiently related to a concept of your design, or to use a texture that is appropriate but overwhelms the design. Texture should be used to strengthen the idea, never simply to decorate. If your idea does not immediately call for the use of texture to reinforce the concept, it may be better to wait until other elements are in place and then see if the addition of texture will enhance the design. If textures do seem appropriate, keep in mind that in general, textures should play a supporting role in the design and should, not, and should be subtle so they don't get in the way of other more important elements. Things that you should, you should consider when using texture. Will an overall texture help convey the idea of your design? That should be first and foremost. Will texture be used to fill individual shapes or other portions of the design? Have you ever considered the texture that surrounds you in everyday life? Will any of these textures strengthen your design? Even if texture is not to be added graphically to your design, what role will, will it be played by the texture of the paper that you use if it's a printed piece? Are you going to use artwork in the form of photographs or illustrations that convey a feeling of texture? Do the textures that you've chosen support or overwhelm the concept in your piece? Is the texture in your piece an integrated part of the concept or does it feel added at the last minute? Things that you can do with texture are you can relate an image to its background. For instance, you could run a floral pattern around a photo of an elegant floral picture frame. You could give the piece a mood or a personality. A piece done on soft textured paper gives the feeling of warmth. You could create contrast for interest. Run a solid color around a very textured photo or illustration or around a block of copy. You could fool the eye. Create a wrapping paper pattern by repeating type to add dimension and visual texture. You could provide a particular emotion. A piece with pictures of yarn and sweater shirts produces a different reaction than a piece with chrome or glass. You could create the feeling of richness and depth. You could add liveliness and activity. For instance, if you foil stamp a word or two in the letterhead, uh, foil stamping is when a die is used to create dimension and then a foil is heat set onto the paper. So it's like a raised or indented um, portion of the paper but it actually has a metallic look to it and it can definitely add quite a bit of texture to a piece to use a foil stamp. Let's look at some pieces and explore how they use texture. The first example is the uh, Episiera Bistro. Uh, this is a very clever and dynamic identity package and the menu is made to look as if the lettering of the restaurant were cut from cardboard. The cardboard letters have a drop shadow and that helps to create depth. They are designed to look 3D and they really just pop off the page. The E in the name have a little string attached to them and it cleverly displays the secondary tagline and the address. In addition, the paper has what appears to be coffee cup stains all over it which help reinforce and give more texture to the piece. The cardboard treatment and the coffee-stained medium invoke feelings of casual comfort and relaxation. 
the viewer is made to feel like this is a bistro that invites you in, treats you like family, and hopes you stay and relax. They repeat the same theme with the cutout cardboard letters and treat headers in the menu with the exact same style. So here's an example of what's happening on the menu right here. Notice how uh, sparingly color is used. The color palette is kept to a minimum so it doesn't compete with the texture that the piece has and uses so well. All in all, this is a wonderful marketing piece and it certainly benefits from and stands out as an extremely unique piece due to the successful use of texture. The next example is Nine Lives Reincarnated Furniture and Accessories. Their logo and identity takes a literal spin on the name and concept of cats having nine lives. The store sells vintage furniture and the marketing material is printed on thick, corrugated and distressed cardstock. Having the business cards and tags look and feel um, aged is a great tie into the name and the actual product that's being sold. One really gets what the store is about right away. Seeing the time and effort that the designer put into designing and then printing these promotional pieces, I mean it must have been very challenging to print on such thick distressed format. It gives the viewer the idea that the furniture store is a little different from others. Their goods may be more unusual and picked um, by someone who took time to look at the little details. The non-traditional thickness and cardstock used on the cards adds a completely new tactile experience to the recipient. Holding this card feels different. It stands out from the rest. This piece proves that there's a way to accomplish the seemingly impossible to achieve a great creative effect. The next example is Anthropology. I really like the style of the Anthropology website and it seems to change almost every time I come back to it. The layered style, it's almost reminiscent of scrapbooking, it adds the textures of the physical world into a more digital realm. Anthropology also integrates the unique textures and patterns of its textiles, so the design not only is a great example of texture, but it's also an excellent use of incorporating um, their actual products into the design. The textures used on this site give a very earthy, down-home, yet semi-exotic feeling. They're constantly updating their site and it always looks fresh and offers, and offers a layered tactile look in the digital realm. If you get a chance, check out the Anthropology catalogs as well. They do a wonderful job of incorporating texture into the printed pieces as well. The catalogs are printed on a non-coated, heavier paper. All the photography is beautifully done and it always displays more artsy shots that help to add to the multi-dimensional feel of the promotional pieces and there are things like close-ups of chairs with a, a beautiful fabric covering it or interesting shots of furniture buildings that are taken during the photo shoot and they're liberally spread out throughout the catalog but it definitely adds a lot of texture to their marketing material. And the final example in our texture section is the cherry wine soft drink advertisement and you can see right away that this contains a lot of texture. The most prominent texture is in the mountains right here. They have a gritty look and they pop off the page due to the drop shadow. If you look closely, and I don't know if you can see it right here, but the background is also textured. It's a, like green textured paper. These both contrast well with the product shot, which is a glass bottle. It appears cool, slick, wet, fresh out of the fridge. The success of this piece is in its simplicity, minimal copy and imagery, and the contrast created by the textured elements. Even the tagline looks as if it were pasted into the ad, giving yet another layer and diverse texture to the piece. I hope you'll look at texture a little bit differently after this discussion and incorporate it into your work.